Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jisoo. Uh, it's a great honor to have an opportunity to present at Code Blue 2016. In this summer, I and Inhyuk and uh, attended Black Hat at DEF CON. And the best interest of the DEF CON is CGC, Cyber Grand Challenge, the world's first all machine hacking tournament. Uh, only with a few of the engineers' initial participation, the machines detected vulnerabilities, attack, and patches for themselves. It was very awesome. Uh, usually, I research about <coughs> sorry. Uh, usually, I research about security evaluation and current certification. Ideally, the result of, the result of security evaluation and certification must be same without reference to the tester or evaluator. And less time and cost for evaluator evaluation may be better. Achieving higher security evaluation level means that we need some techn techniques to make clear and objective results no matter who tested, who evaluated. So it is recommended to use some tools to help security evaluation. This is a main motivation of our presentation. Actually, there are no tools only for hacking or only for security evaluation. There are only tools, only role, uh, there are only tools on roles and goals. On the flight coming back from DEF CON, I think CGC's fully automated vulnerability detection techniques and tools can help make security evaluation, and result objective, including vulnerability assessment. In this presentation, Inhyuk and I analyzed some tools for design assurance and security testing, and want to discuss about the possibility of uh, applying fully automated tools with security evaluation. Our presentation is consists of two parts. First part is I will tell you why we should use automated tools, and why, we, why it is important. Uh, second part, we will describe some tools for design assurance and code assurance. We choose some assessment items from the point of view of the security evaluation. Also, we prepare some demos with you, demo videos about using tools. Let me start by saying just a few words about us and my professor. Both Inhyog and, and I completed a high quality information security education, education course that called the best of the best. And now we are in master course in Korea University, Graduate School of Information Security. Uh, we are in SANE lab, uh, security analysis and evaluation lab. Uh, this is my professor, Seungju Kim, and corresponding author of this presentation. He is interested in cryptography, security evaluation, information assurance, uh, and so on. Last year, he also presented Code Blue uh, 2015. Uh, the title is How South Korea Invests in Human Capital for Cybersecurity. At first, I think it's pretty useful to form a consensus for better understand my presentation. I think you have heard uh, assurance. Assurance, it means that level of trust, it, level of trust, it does. And then information assurance means that degree of trust in the information. I want to talk about the background, the rise of the information assurance. In 1980, it was InfoSec era. InfoSec means information security. Uh, and the first concept of information assurance appeared in 1991 with Gulf War. Uh, sometimes Gulf War was, has often been called in first information war. In the book, Security Engineering and Information Assurance, written by Deborah Herman, he quoted some reports. Uh, you can see the below, uh, below box. Uh, at the head of the operation, the system supported 700,000 telephone calls, and 152,000 messages per day. More than 30,000 radio frequencies were managed to provide the necessary connectivity and to ensure minimum interference. Uh, 
It includes some information assurance concept. And that's why Gulf War is often called the harbinger of, the harbinger of information assurance. And after that, in 1996, U.S. Department of, Department of Defense defined the first standardized definition for information assurance at, in their directive. In the directive, DOD, uh, in the DOD directive 5 slash 3600.1, now the directive DOD 8500.01E, the definition of information assurance is written like this. It includes the it includes security property such as availability, integrity, authentication, confidentiality, non-repudiation, and restoration. And then, what are the differences between information security and information assurance? The goal of information assurance includes not only confidentiality, integrity, availability, but also includes non-repudiation, accountability, auditability, transparency, uh, etc. And also security mechanism includes all available, all available such as technical, organizational, human-oriented, and legal. To sum up briefly, information security is protecting information and information systems from unauthorized access. Uh, and information assurance is validating that uh, information, authentic, information is authentic, trustworthy, and accessible. Then how can you achieve information assurance? Now, I will talk about the way to achieving information assurance. Uh, what is information assurance? Uh, information assurance uh, depends from hackers' attack or operating during emergency like a uh, natural disaster. Uh, let's see the picture. The dependability of a system reflects the user's degree of trust in the system. It, ref it reflects the extent of user's confidence that it will, it will operate it as users expected and that will not fail in normal use. As you can see, for dependability, there are four property, availability, reliability, safety, and security. Let's see next page. Four elements about dependability I mentioned before are not independent of each other. They interact with each other closely and compl complicatedly, uh, complicated. For example, adding state-of-the-art technology into smart devices may affect security feature of the devices. So we must consider all, all four elements during the whole system lifecycle. Even a few years, even a few years ago, usually in security area, uh, they consider uh, security, availability, reliability are mainly considered, uh, mainly considered. and other area like automobile, air traffic control system, mainly considered safety, reliability, and availability. In case of automobile, security was low at first, but now it is medium because network, network system, which can affect directly to driving, are applied to automobile. Pictures in the right are Charlie Miller and Chris Balasek's presentation at DEF CON 23rd. I think you guys already know the presentation. They showed, some, uh, they showed what can be happen if the car is hacked. Uh, it's very terrible. And then, how can you achieve information assurance? Uh, the answer is security engineering. Ross Anderson, professor of a computer laboratory in University, Cambr University of Cambridge, wrote security engineering definition in his book like this. Let's see some keyword. Remain dependable focuses on tools needed to design, implement, and test complete systems 
and to adapt existing systems as their environment evolves. It means that all phases in the system life cycle must consider dependability. For achieving information assurance, assurance must be considered in each system's life cycle phase. That is, policy assurance, design assurance, implementation assurance, operational assurance are needed. Security engineering can give the systematic method and be applied to a whole system life cycle. There is a specific and detailed description for system engineering life cycle process in uh, a, lot of, uh, many of, uh, a lot of standards. For example, I, international standard organization or common criteria and uh, CMVP and CNA. Okay, uh, but usually that can be simplified with five phases below. Requirements, design, implementation, release, and maintenance. Security engineering can be checked every phase in this phase. This is an example case of a security development life cycle. This is a Microsoft security development life cycle. There are five phases in the center of the life cycle, the green zone. Large boxes in each phase means that the activities for, the secu for security engineering. Besides, many IT companies or organizations have their own security development life cycle like a Cisco or WASP. Yeah. I wonder that security development life cycle nearly really work. And I found, some, uh, I found a report from Microsoft about SDLC. These two graphs shows the number of vulnerabilities before and after SDLC for Windows OS and uh, Windows uh, SQL Server. As you can see, there are 46% and 91% decreasing rate, respectively. I think we, we, it will be more efficient as long as the specific techniques, techniques in SDLC are developed continually. As I mentioned earlier, assurance means that the level of trust, then what is high assurance? Let's talk about the high assurance. As you can see in the text box, high assurance means that it can be mathematically proven that the system works perfectly as intended and designed. And also, high assurance development means that there are clear and compelling evidence in each development, development phase. Before we talk about high assurance for CPS, let's check some points about CPS shortly. CPS are co-engineered interacting network of physical and computational components. CPS is a foundation of the critical infrastructure. So CPS should consider information assurance. Because critical infrastructure, such as finance, aviation, medical, automotive, directly and broadly affect human life. High assurance must be considered and applied and guaranteed for the credit card infrastructure. Let's see it more concretely. ISO IEC 2912A, it means verification of a cryptographic protocol. And ISO IEC 15408, it means evaluation criteria for IT security. It, uh, they are focusing on reliability and security. On the other hand, ISO 26262, it means road vehicle functional safety, and DO 24, uh, 254, design assurance, uh, design, design assurance guidance for airborne hardware. They are mainly focusing on safety and reliability. This table shows assurance level for each uh, standard or regulation. 
I want to talk about ISO IEC 29128 and ISO IEC 15408, which have both reliability and security. At first, let's see a verification of cryptographic protocol. I, I mean ISO IEC 29128. There are a total of four assurance level and from, from up to PAL3, it requires a formal description of protocol specification in a tool specific specification. Uh, sorry, specification language. The language's semantics is mathematically defined and self-assessment evidence to PAL2, uh, PAL PAL3, and PAL4 also require tool aided verification. And next, let's see ISO 15408. It means common criteria. Common criteria evaluation assurance level, EAL, have a total of seven level, EAL1 to EAL7. After EAL4, that is EAL5, EAL6, EAL7, requires semi-formal or formal verification of design and test. test. For better understanding, I added this table. This table shows corresponding assurance level between ISO 15408 and ISO 21928. High assurance is corresponding to, high assurance is considered at over EAL5 and PAL3. Like uh, ISO 15408 and 29128, the higher assurance level, that is, to achieve a higher assurance, all evidence should be measurable and mathematically prov provable. So that's why we need formal verification, and some tools can help this process. In many countries, testing, and evalu uh, testing, evaluation, and certification methods to achieve higher assurance are researched. There is a common, uh, there is a control system security center in Japan. It is, it is Technology Research Association and one of the, its major business activities is system security verification. System security ver verification is to establish verification method and execute evaluation of real system and components. As you can see, uh, there is a test bed like a picture below in the CSSC, I mean, con uh, I mean Control System Security Center. Because of many library and test tool, I think it also help, can help, may help for more verification. I'm curious about what tools and li what libraries are in their test server and what test they do for verification. Uh, another project is uh, in the United States, there is a program called High Assurance Cyber Military System hosted by DARPA. HACMS is a program for making high assurance of cyber physical system and key HACMS technology include interactive software synthesis system, verification tools such as the theorem prover, and model checker and specification language. Uh, from until now, I presented uh, background and knowledge for this presentation. And next, uh, my friend In Hyuk will present for automated tools for security testing and evaluation. Thank you. We explained meaning of information assurance and necessary of security engineering for high assurance. Now, we will introduce the assessment features of automated tools for security evaluation and how can we apply these automated tools to security evaluation. Nowadays, uh, the study related to automated vulnerability detection uh, technique more active than ever in hacking community by Cyber Grand Challenge. For a long time, automated vulnerability detection technique is steadily researched for on software security in academic as well as in hacking community. Then, why do we need automated tools? 
Uh, in fact, meaning and goal of uh, automated tool for hackers, bug hunters, and uh, meaning and goal of uh, automated tools for security evaluation is clearly different. Let's talk about that in more detail. Um, hackers and bug hunters apply the auto automated technical to automation technique to vulnerability detection tools for finding unknown vulnerability like zero day more, more, more easily. But in security evaluation, automated tools are used to achieve the goal of evaluation. If then, what is the goal of security evaluation? Uh, in that graph, uh, sec security evaluation makes, must make the same result regardless of security evaluator's capability. And in-depth result of security evaluation is ensured when security evaluator manually perform evaluation, security evaluation. But in this case, it may cause a lot of mistakes. So it is ideal that use the qualified automated tools for deriving objective, objective evaluation result. Uh, ultimately, the reason for applying automated tools in security evaluation is that ensure high assurance from very little effort. If then, is it suitable to use tools for hackers in security evaluation area? My answer is it's not suitable yet now. Uh, because we consider variety, variety things in order to use in security evaluation uh, automated tools. Uh, when we apply these tools in, when you apply these automated tools in security evaluation, we consider, um, oh, oh, we consider a variety of things in order to achieve the goal of evaluation or ensure high assurance. Then when we choose automated vulnerability detection tools for security evaluation, what should we consider? Uh, I will talk about assessment features for automated tools in three wide range. Uh, first one is user-friendly. Uh, user-friendly is easy to use in the evaluator's uh, perspective. Uh, next one is effectiveness. Uh, effectiveness is important because security evaluation is conducted limited period, period of time. During that period, period evaluator ensures the assurance for target of evaluation by using automated tools. Last one is scalability. Scalability is considered consider the tool's scalability because in security evaluation, variety target of evaluation are tested. Naturally, uh, more detailed features are different by security evaluation uh, level, detail level or phase. However, I will explain the various automated tools based on these three, uh, three features. First, we, uh, we talk about tools for design assurance. Uh, these are assessment items to choose automated tools for design assurance. Uh, User-friendly is composed of usability, analysis report, requirement to evaluator. Uh, Usability is just usability. Uh, in this case, we consider UI such as graphic or command line, or accessibility or install to use, install, easy to install. Analysis report check whether the tool provide the test report. If tools provide the report, check that it is provided on easy to understand. Uh, and requirement to evaluator checks whether the provide a Tool, the tool demand the uh, additional requirement to security evaluator. If tools requires uh, additional requirement, uh, we check tools uh, detail requirement. Uh, second is effectiveness. Effectiveness is, is composed of automation level, model description method, and licensing cost. Automation level is tools automation level. It's divided to uh, fully automated and interactive and manual. 
uh, method, model description method is uh, gen generation method of model. Uh, in other words, which language are used to generate model? Uh, model of system or protocol syst uh, software implementation. And licensing and its cost is divided to open source, free, commercial. Uh, it is, if it is commercial tool, we check tools, prices, or maintenance cost. And scalability is uh, only one element. Um, supported platforms is tools learning, learning environment. Uh, for example, only Linux, only Windows, or Mac, Linux, Windows, like that. There's a typical type of design assurance, model checking method, and theorem proving based method. Uh, simply saying, model checking is checking method for specific system states by mo abstraction. Uh, I mean, modeling or system states. Uh, next, theorem proving base, it, it looks like a logic calculator. It proves user theory with logical symbols and specific language. Uh, now, before we talk about design assurance tools, I, do, I would like to say one thing. All tools in design level, there is a common feature. Uh, there is automation level is interactive because these tools need a model that abstract from near software protocol system implementation. So if so if evaluators use these tools, then they should cre create a model directly using specified uh, method, uh, such as uh, script or formal language. In addition, in addition, the evaluator must have ability of understanding protocol and modeling to create a, cre create the model. Uh, first, uh, NRL protocol analyzer. Uh, it's developed by Il University of Illinois, and uh, it generates model by using MAUD protocol specific specification language. Uh, and next to uh, FDR, failure divergence refinement. Uh, uh, it developed by University of Oxford, and it generates model by formal language CSP. And CIDR is also developed by University of Oxford, and it generates model by uh, standard page description language. We, we will show some demo for it later. And ProVerif uh, is developed by Prosecco, and it uses PVScript to generate the model. ProVerif also provides a uh, web version, is to access And Isabel and higher order logic is through theorem proving based tool. Uh, theorem proving based is a calculator, a logical calculator. And this is, it is developed by Cambridge, University of Cambridge, and use functional and logic language. So evaluator use this HOL uh, and they prove their, their theorem. And now we talk about code levels automated tools. Uh, these are assessment items to, to choose automated tools for code assurance. Uh, I want to skip same part before I mentioned in design level. Uh, in here, in effectiveness, analysis method is technique and tools attribute for code assurance such as static analysis, binary analysis. And detectable vulnerability type is the type of vulnerability the can, that tool can detect. Uh, code coverage is a measure used to describe the degree to which the code or program is executed when a tool runs. Uh, but almost modern tools, in principle, code coverage is increasing as time goes by. And Supported language is tool supporting for target of evaluation. 
uh, programming language like C, C++, Java, or uh, low binary. Uh, this all these years, finalist of CGC. Uh, I simplify the CGC CRS process. CGC wants fully automated security testing for software. No human intervention and um, only machine. Uh, in this process, I think it, it is very appropriate for security evaluation. Uh, first three tools are source code analysis tools. Fortify, code sonar, and check marks. Fortify is really uh, used in evaluation agency to detect known vulnerability based on OWASP, SANS, CWE, and FISMA, and so on. So I really want to use these tools for uh, today's demo. But I emailed and requested each vendor for trial review. No reply from each vendor. So this information are taken from vendor's data sheet or case study. Uh, all these source code tools are um, automation level is fully automated, so easy to use. When you use this tool, you just throw your code in the tool. Then they, the tools uh, result the detailed report about vulnerability type, uh, vulnerability root cause, uh, etc. And CLI and Mayhem, uh, SAGE, AFL is a binary based uh, automated uh, code assurance tool. But this is, these are Automation level is interactive. Uh, for example, um, AFL is uh, today's uh, famous forger, I think. But it is very uh, evaluator's perspective. It is very hard to, hard to use because uh, we learn this tool for binary or software, uh, you need crash analysis ability, you need ability of crash analysis or root cause analysis. And uh, this is IoT Cube. Uh, it is developed by CC, CSSA uh, Center, uh, Center. Yes, uh, this is uh, it provides white box testing and black box testing and network testing in web browser. You access to easy. Uh, I will show demo for this IoT Cube. And I want to, uh, as I mentioned, CGC is very appropriate for security evaluation. Uh, find vulnerability or patching or report. But CyberGrant Challenge operating system is limited and customized OS. So uh, not now. Uh, so we, we installed, we tried to install the mechanical, mechanical fish of Shellfish CRS. Uh, but Later I, may, later, I will explain about these tools. So we check uh, important assessment features and uh, evaluator, evaluation, evaluate the tool. So in security evaluation, it is important to maintain same result regardless, regardless of evaluator's capability, and result must be objective. As you may know, source code analysis tools use and reflect uh, known vulnerability in CVE, CWE, etc. Conventional security evaluations focus on source code analy analy analysis, but it, can't de it cannot detect unknown vulnerability or vulnerabilities in execution environment uh, like memory corruption, type of memory corruption. And also, uh, purging tools may be useful to hackers 
but it's not suitable to use for security evaluation because it, can, it cannot guarantee objective result and sometimes it needs long time and use user's own capability. So it's not you know, for achieving high assurance automatically with these tools. For achieving high assurance by using automated tools in whole system lifecycle, static and dynamic analysis method to binary and source code must be integrated with efficiency and measurable mathematically. Uh, we, we, let's see some demo for our implementation. Uh, uh, we choose same target of evaluation is OpenSSL because it is widely used security protocol and usually used to protocol protect information transmit between uh, communic browser and servers. So we apply design and code assurance to OpenSSL. First, we, we uh, I quote, the simplified TRS key transport protocol from book, name protocols for authentication and key establishment. Uh, you simplify TRS key transport, transport protocol and uh, we implement a model and generate model using CIDR. Mm. Uh, this is a protocol specification. Uh, Below, A is client, B is server. Uh, this protocol is transports the pre-master secret key from client to server. Uh, so N is nonce. Uh, in standard TRS specifies use of RSI, RS, RSA public key encryption. And digital signature algorithm is use five bit key. And PMK is pre-master secret. And KAB is session key from um, PMK and nonce A, nonce B. And in this phase, we use three message sequence. Um, message sequence is hashes of sequence of all previous exchanged message. Now, we verification by using CIDR for demo. The left, uh, at the right, it is CIDR specific, use CIDR specification and I implement, I generate model uh, for simplified TRS transport protocol. In, the, in, in, this, uh, in this model, uh, uh, we use uh, lower I and lower R. Its lower is I is initiator and R is list founder. In this case, uh, initiator is client A and R is server B. So, uh, as you see before I present, uh, this this phase is about TRS simplified transport protocol. So, in this uh, macro is. As you know, in C or C++, C++ is macro uh, uh, defined. So we predefined about message sequence one and message sequence two and message sequence three. And uh, symmetric key, KIL. Uh, it makes from PMK and nonce A, nonce B. And open, uh, execute your execute CIDR program and open uh, my model. And I verified, I click ver verified protocol. Then automated uh, CIDR 
analysis our protocol and we use is claim, claim keyword. Claim keyword is uh, what you need to check about security protocols for your model. So this claim is seven is quote from Nidem Shredder protocol, a case study. So uh, as you see lizard, the Secret NI, secret NR is fail because we send nonce is uh, plain text. So it is uh, probability of uh, attack. And PMK is we send, people send uh, encrypt uh, Bob's public key. So it is secured from attackers. It's here. And you can click this pattern and you can see the diagram of these protocols and attack protocols, attack process. And we, as I mentioned, we try to, we try to install mechanical fish because mechanical fish is published open source. But in in Sharpish's GitHub, uh, they write this red box. Keep in mind that this was never designed to be turnkey. Might not install without extreme effort, and might not work without a lot of tweaking. Otherwise, have it. So I failed. So <laughs> I did not prepare for this demo. And IoT Cube is. Uh, oh, let's let's see the demo. IoT Cube is developed by CCSL Lab and uh, CSSL Lab, and CSL uh, Center for sorry sorry, and Korea University CSSL Lab. And this white box, I tested white box testing. You can download in hash marker. Please see demo. Sorry. Uh, you can download uh, hash marker and it can detect code clone uh, with hash mark, hash mark function. So I input, input the OpenSSL directory and generate hash marks. Uh, there is a two option. One is abstraction op option and abstraction on option. Uh, if you turn on abstraction op option, uh, you can get uh, detect exact clone, exact clones only. But if you check abstraction on option, uh, you you can detect near miss similar similar clones, not exact code, uh, include exact clone. Uh, and so very long time. So skip. And uh, finish the hash marking, and it'll result the HIDX file. So you can get access here and <coughs> drag and drop HIDX file. It's for C and C++. C++. So in this case, uh, this program. Uh, about code clone detects. In this case, I checked abstraction on, so it can detect exact code, de code clone, exact code clone. And this is a source tree for uh, co code clones detection.
so we and for demo I installed AFL to OpenSSL 101 app for hot bleed vulnerability. But for for two weeks, but crash is not generated. So I just attached a screenshot. So conclusion. There are many kinds of vulnerability detection tools developed by hackers, researchers. In present, we use these tools for security testing and evaluation, but there are some limits. Objectivity, coverage, more like efficient, and usability. Uh, recently, many of hackers research and develop automation tools that can find uh, unknown vulnerability easily. But we can't apply these tools to security evaluation immediately. But if fully automated security testing techniques are developed and we make an effort to apply it for evaluation continuously, achieving high assurance is not far. Thank you. <laughs>